Hello everyone, my name is Dean and welcome back to a Ruby on Rails tutorial. Wow, it feels like it's been almost two months since I've made one of these. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at action text. Now this is a topic we've covered before on the channel. In fact, the first week of the 20 and 20 challenge was an action text blog. We used it for the comments in there and I'll have a link to that video somewhere. Uh, but today we're going to be taking a look just at the basic how do you set up action text uh, tutorial part. So this is going to be useful for, you know, comments like we did before, or maybe you want like a WYSIWYG editor, rich text editor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe you want to extend it a bit so that, you know, you want to add in some videos or something. Uh, that's something we'll be covering in, I guess, this week's 20 and 20 challenge video now that I'm back to making these again. Uh, but today we're going to be setting up like this tricks editor uh, I'm going to show you how to get the images to work because by default, if you just pop the like image in there, it'll let you embed it or whatever, or it'll like attach. Uh, but the image won't actually show up when you try to use action text. So we'll also take a look at that. And thankfully, I ran into that issue because I'm using a new computer. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's something I probably wouldn't have noticed otherwise, and there probably would have been some confused comments. So this way we can at least like tackle this from the perspective of someone who is brand new to trying to do this. Uh, but that's enough for me. Let's go ahead and let's jump into some code. Okay, so the first thing we want to do once we create our new Rails application, uh, we're going to just close out of these windows. Uh, let's go ahead and let's create a basic scaffold for us to work with. So for this, I'm going to say Rails G scaffold post. I'll give it a title, and this is going to be of type string by default, so you don't actually need to include this colon string. And normally when we create like a blog post or something, we usually give it a body of type text. Uh, but here we're actually going to be using action text for our body, so we can just omit that for right now. So we'll just say Rails G scaffold post title, and then we'll run our generator. Now there's going to be a couple things we need to do after running this generator. The first one is let's go into our routes.rb and let's actually set the root of the application to be the post controller index action. And then let's come into our app and our assets style sheets and let's delete this scaffolds.scss file. Now that that's deleted, and that we have our root of our application set up, let's go ahead and let's run a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate the database. And then we can run a Rails S command to start our server. And then we can navigate to localhost port 3000 in our browser, and we should get popped into our web page. Now, hopefully this is zoomed in enough for you guys to see this. If we click on new post, we can just give this like a blank title or whatever. We have our title, we can see it, we can edit it, we can, you know, destroy it, whatever. But now maybe you want to add in some, like, rich text. So you want the ability to, you know, do some blog creation or something. So, like, on my website, I have, you know, these blog posts. And if you uh, scroll through them, I have, like, images and pop-ups and stuff like this. And that's all neatly formatted. And I'm not going through and creating this HTML every time I do this. It's done through a like a WYSIWYG editor basically which is what we're trying to set up here so if you want to set up one of these WYSIWYG editors in Rails now all you have to do is uh, stop your server we'll then clear our console and I'm doing that with control L uh, and then we can just say Rails active or no sorry Rails action underscore text colon install and that will install the active storage module for action text uh, which is what you use for the images. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I should run into some issues here because this is my first time running uh, Rails on this computer. And it's going to yell at me in a couple different ways for the actual images for this, but we'll deal with that in a minute. The first thing I want to start with is setting up the back end. So for that, we're going to come into the app and we want to go into our models and our post.rb. And then we just want to say that this has rich text and then we want to say it's rich text for the body. Then we can come into our controllers folder and our post controller, and we'll scroll down to the bottom. And after the title, we'll just permit the body parameter as well. So that handles our back end and our middle. Now we just need to do the actual front end. And for that, we can come into our views, posts, and our form.html.erb. And in here, we'll just create a field. And we'll say this is a, oops, a 
form dot label for the body. Let me just close this and clean it up. And then we also have a form dot rich text area for the body. And then we just need to come into our show page and below this we want to, because now we're you know, creating the form for the actual uh, rich text. So now if we click on new post, we'll see that. But now once we like submit the post, we'd like to be able to actually see this body that we've created. And for this, let's create just like a div with a class equal to container. And we're not actually gonna be styling this. We're just creating this div as like a placeholder for now. And then in here, we'll just say this is the at post.body, just like we normally would, but here we're using the uh, rich text area instead. So if I go ahead and I run a Rails DB colon migrate command, because we need to migrate the action text tables and the active storage tables, both of which were generated for us with that command, this will add it into the database, and then we can run a Rails S command to start the server up again. And then if we navigate to localhost port 3000 again, this should hopefully, if we click on new post, allow us to create our uh, WYSIWYG editor post stuff. So we can say, you know, this is my first post. And then in here we can throw in some lorem ipsum. So let's go ahead and let's Google for some. So let's just look for like a lorem ipsum generator. Let me just zoom in a bit. I'll just go to the first one I see. Uh, it's not really a generator, but I'll just copy two paragraphs of this. I'll paste it in here. All right, so we have some bolded text. We can also italicize it, maybe strike through some of it. Uh, you know, we can create like lists. So we can say, you know, bullet list point one, two, three, etc. Maybe we also want to be able to like do a quote. And then down here we can include um, an image. So I'll just click on this attach files button. I'll open up like a image explorer or whatever. And I'll just grab like this one, for example. So we have our image here. And then below this, we'll just do some more words or something, I don't know. So now we have, you know, a pretty expansive blog post. It's, it's something. <laughs> Looks like a freshman that's trying to impress their peers, but you know, it's good enough. But now if we click create post, yeah, it's gonna be yelling at us. And why is it yelling at us? Well, it's sort of two reasons. The first one is if I scroll up here, it should say uh, no mini magic. So in order to get that part working, I think we can come into our gem file and if we uncomment this gem image processing and then we stop our server, if I run a bundle install command now, I think I might have already had this one installed, but it should install image processing and the mini magic gem. So now if I run Rails S the Rails S command again and I refresh this page, uh, hopefully we get a different error that's complaining about image magic. So because I'm on a Linux here, I can actually just do a sudo command for that. But if you aren't, you can just go to Google and search for image magic, and then you can come to their website and download it from here. I'm just going to do a sudo apt git install image magic command, and hopefully this is the right command for this. Looks like it is, so I'll type Y and hit enter, and hopefully that'll install everything for me. And then once this is done, I should be able to start my server again, and the uh, WYSIWYG editor should work just fine. So if I do this and I type Rails S, hopefully Trix, uh, which is what you know Action Text runs on. So Action Text is just a port of uh, Trix, which is used by Basecamp, which is um, you know DHH's, I guess second oldest child at this point, maybe I don't know, one of his children, one of his many children. Um, but yeah, so now you can see we have the images working, we have the rich text, and this is all working how you would sort of expect it to. Now, let's say you wanted to style this image, right? So you can't really go into your show page and say like, I don't know, uh, at post.body.image.width equals 400 pixels or something, right? That doesn't make any sense. 
So how do you actually grab this? If you have like 10 images, how do you style them? How would any of that work so that you can have like a better layout for your blog? Well, inside of your views, you'll see that you have this active storage, and then you'll see you have this underscore blob.html.erv file. This is actually where your image attachment happens. So in here, you can see you have a figure class with the attachment, etc. You have your image tag, which is your blob.representation. So this is your actual image if you wanted to style it. And then down here, you have your captions or your attachment names, whatever you decide to do here. So if you wanted to resize this, this is the area you're doing it in. If you wanted to like center this or create some sort of slideshow effect or something, this is also where you would be doing this. So that's inside of your views, active storage slash blobs uh, slash underscore blobs blob.html.erb file. Now I will be covering this in, I guess, this week's 20 and 20 video now that I'm back to doing videos again. <laughs> Uh, and in there, we're going to be using this blob.html.erb file to include the ability to attach videos. Because I think right now, if I click back and I click new post, if I try to attach an actual video, uh, like this intro video, I don't think this will actually work. Right, so it's just creating this actual file here. Uh, so we'll be going through how to like format some stuff in the blob.html.erb file, and we'll also be covering um, how to sanitize stuff like the video tags, because right now the video tag isn't being like allowed through. So even if I were to create something in like my show page that was you know like a CSS video tag or whatever, this still or <laughs> CSS uh, HTML video tag, this still wouldn't work. So that's something else that we need to, um, I guess, look at in that video. But hopefully this first one, it was helpful and that this is, you know, something you guys were interested in. I think other people have covered uh, action text before, but I've had a couple of comments asking for it and people messaging me. So I thought I'd just cover it real quick as like a way to get back into the swing of making videos again. Uh, apparently I have a Bing rebates reward, so that's exciting too. Um, but okay, I don't know what's happening down here. I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the outro video now. Okay, so that's going to do it for today's video. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. You know, the usual shtick. If this helped you, remember to like the video. Uh, if this didn't help you, remember to dislike it because we don't need to subject other people to more bad tutorials. You know, get the useful ones to the top of the YouTube algorithm and get the bad ones downvoted so that we don't have to deal with the bad ones. I know that's not the usual YouTube talk you get, but that's, I guess, the way we should approach this from an academic perspective. I don't know. Uh, but if this video helped you, you know, maybe consider subscribing. There's plenty more coming, assuming my computer doesn't catch on fire. And as you can see, there's plenty of fans on this one. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, but that's going to do it for me. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>